I previously made a video about how I stole a prototype iPad Pro running macOS from Steve Jobs himself. macOS on here for like 10 years now. Can I have a look? Yeah. This is macOS. Hey! Hey, come back here! Oh! Hey, stay there! Hey, sorry man! <laughs> And the crazy thing is, many people were disappointed to find out it was a joke. Number one, Steve Jobs wasn't alive. Steve? Uh, yeah. And number two, that I was remoting my Mac OS from my MacBook. Like it just made people go, oh, this bloody clickbait. Oh, I guess it is clickbait. It was clickbait. Pretty good. Got a lot of views. Did the job. I had far too many requests saying, how did you do it? Now, do I recommend this? Do I think this is a game changing thing? No. Here's a quick video on how to get macOS running on your iPad Pro via a remote software. This is not sponsored by the remote software app or anything like that. In fact, I did pay for the app and I don't recommend paying for it. Just do this if you're bored out of your ass. Step number one, you want to download the application. I'll link all this stuff in the description so you can like get to it straight away. By the way, this works on Windows too. So you can actually stream your Windows over to your iPad. Pretty crazy. I've already got it downloaded. Step two is you want to create an account. You want to sign up, okay? Now here, this stuff shouldn't be enabled as default. So you're going to have to go in there. If you are skeptical, don't do it. If you've got very important stuff on your MacBook, confidential information, stuff like that, just don't do it. If you want to use this separately, so this thing at home and you want to go to Bali and access your laptop, then you're going to have to get that port forwarding thing sorted. So I'm going to now jump onto my iPad. Screen's five. So let's just hit download on this one. All right, now let's open this app. Okay, so I'll sign in real quick. I think that worked. So now I'm just going to click on the MacBook Pro. Uh, trackpad mode is what I want. So that's it. So now, believe it or not, this is Mac OS, as you can see. And the reason why I use screens is because, so here, if you look at, if you look at, I don't know if you can see anything here, but um, I can move stuff around on my thing and there's barely any lag. So that's it. That's pretty simple. Let's talk about some of the benefits and limitations that I bumped into during my a couple of weeks of testing. Benefit number one, I can do this whilst the MacBook is closed. I think you can even take this out and take that out. It's not charging, it's just closed, it's just sitting there sleeping or whatever. And I can still control everything. That's pretty cool. So this setup could be mighty useful if you have a dedicated desktop like a Mac mini or an iMac or something like that when you wanna just go portable uh, once in a while, you can. So you can use the pen. Yeah, you can't really like draw on it like I was hoping. Okay, now I've actually got sidecar open. This is pretty cool. I can be super precise. So, so what I'll do is I'll probably have the keyboard so that I can like just add and subtract from this. Might be a good time to put on a screen protector that apparently makes this thing feel like paper. My wife will appreciate this way more than me because she actually draws on this thing. This is my wife's trying for the first time. I like yeah. this one. Yeah. It actually feels like a paper. Something mm. covered. Good news, ladies and gentlemen. ESR have officially confirmed to sponsor this video. And not only did they send me these screen protectors, but they've also sent me this Folio case, which is super thin. And by the way, the reason why this is mad is, check this out. It protects the Apple Pencil. Do not get the Apple version. Get this one. I'll leave the links to this stuff in the description. Check this out. Can you, can you hear that? If you don't doodle with the Apple Pencil and you just want something to protect your screen, they also have 
tempered glass, this is called the Armorite, and this thing comes with the effortless bubble-free application. Slot the iPad in there like that with the screen protector on top, peel the peel number one, then peel number two, and then you just slide your finger across and you're done. And I just checked, this is dirt cheap. This is like less than half price compared to the competitors out there, and it freaking looks, feels, and sounds like paper. I'll leave these links in the description, Check it out, it does help support the channel. From what I know, we might be on the tail end of ESR's massive 20% sale. Yeah, this is a no-brainer if you've got an iPad. Another benefit you have is you can literally run any application that macOS can run. Whether it's Photoshop, whether it's Xcode, whether it's just browsing, doing Excel, you know, Google Sheets, frankly, on the iPad, sucks. I don't like it. And so I, I tend to use my MacBook Pro whenever I need to do Google Sheets stuff because I, I just don't like the, the dumbed down version on iPad OS. So yeah, if you're into spreadsheets, you love that stuff, it'll work. All right, let's go over the limitations because there are a boatload of limitations. The first limitation, and it's a bummer for me, is you don't get audio pushed from your Mac. So I can't edit videos on there, I can't edit audio and stuff like that. But if you don't edit anything, you're just a Google Sheets guy, you're set. Another limitation is that you are still running iPad OS. So if you press Command Tab, it's gonna go Command Tab on iPad OS, not on your Mac. The first thing you wanna do is change the keyboard shortcuts. Check this out. So, okay, so I've changed these to this. So if I press Control Up, it's Mission Control. If I press Control Spacebar, it opens up Launchpad. Okay, I just... Um, spent some time at this cafe doing real admin work on my iPad via my Mac, MacBook Pro that's sitting at home, which is pretty wild. So should you buy a desktop Mac and instead of getting a laptop, buy an iPad so that you can remote into your Mac? No, no, definitely don't do that. Do not do that. This is definitely not going to replace your MacBook Air. In theory, it kind of works. I know what you mean because all you can remote in is the same thing. Not really. Because if the second you don't have internet, you don't have Mac OS. And it's just not as fast and the aspect ratio is not the same. So you've got these black bars on the top and bottom. Stuff like that, it's a bit annoying, okay? But it's really annoying having a taste of Mac OS on an iPad and knowing Apple could do it, but they're just deliberately not doing it for the sake of money. It just annoys me that that's the fact. I made a whole video on my experience with macOS on the iPad. If you haven't seen that, I'll link it below the like button. Go check that out, that's pretty cool. By the way, just a, just a disclaimer, Steve Jobs is not alive. I did not steal that iPad. It is not a prototype iPad and I did remote in, okay? In case you're new to this channel, I wanted to let you guys know about the purpose of this YouTube channel. Yeah, we make cool, fun tech videos. Our family's purpose is to use this platform to go out and film documentaries to build awareness for non-for-profits, charities, and missionaries. Recently, wife and I went to Mongolia. Right, right side, left side. <laughs> Filmed two documentaries there. All thanks to you guys. You guys are indirectly, just by watching these videos, commenting, liking, even the bad comment, this is crazy. This is crazy. I am on top of a window. Dude, it's a library under here. Look at this. Can you guys see? Look at that. Oh my goodness. And also there was a guy donated over $5,000 anonymously. And I still don't know who that is. Thank you for helping us live the dream. Not only having fun on YouTube, but also actually being useful to the world. <laughs>